Hello, how's it going? It's me, of course, who else would it be? Someone asked me to make a video about this, and I can't be bothered writing a whole script and editing it all together when the main points I have is just going to jump from like this to this to this, and that's just going to be a bit messy. So I figure, let's just lean into the mess and do it this way instead, because, you know, this might work better. Also, it's less editing for me, because I'm lazy, and also because I've been working on other videos, you know, keep it hush, and all that. Keep it... I, <sighs> anyway, let's talk about The Last of Us Part 2, shall we? Very exciting. I've got a few things to say about the game, a few general sort of things, some minor things, some major things, you know, working all over the scale, musically and that. <laughs> um, which I guess brings us nicely onto something, um, except actually I want to talk about the first game first. I want to talk about Last of Us Part 1. So obviously, leading up to the second game, I replayed the first game because that just makes sense. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what I can say about the first game. I have basically nothing to say about it as it is because you've played the first game probably. You've played it multiple times probably. You probably love it. And I feel the same way, I guess, but... I don't know, man. I've played The Last of Us Part 1 so many times now, and I'm kind of just sick of it, you know? I've played it literally, like, the last playthrough was like my 10th or 11th time going through it all the way, and I'm just, I'm just bored of it. It's just shit, honestly. Like, who needs The Last of Us Part 1 now that we've got Part 2 anyway? Yeah, I don't know. Part 1's good, obviously, for what it is, but I don't know. If I'm being honest with you, I don't, I don't think, compared to Part 2 now, I don't think it actually stacks up at all. I think, I think Part 2 is actually a lot better than part one. So, you know, that's the first hot take. I don't know. Every opinion on this game is a hot take at this point. Um, but yeah, last was part one. I don't have a whole lot to say about it, and I'm going to be spending a lot of time rambling anyway, so I'll try and keep it short. But yeah, it's a good game, obviously. Really well paced, you know, as bloody video game donkey of all people said. First game's obviously a lot more tight and a lot more just focused, I guess. But the second game's a lot more interesting and a lot more creative, I think he said, you know, conceptually and all that, which I agree with, obviously. Anyway, so part one, it's good, but I've kind of just run it into the ground at this point, played it too many times, you know, I don't really get anything out of it anymore, you know, playing the game is just, I don't know, it's kind of mind-numbing in a way. I'm sounding really negative on it, The Last of Us is one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah, it's a very special game, and I guess part of the reason why it's kind of been run into the ground for me now is because I played it so many times, you know, getting like the Platinum Trophy, which is another thing to talk about with this game as well, is the Platinum Trophy is really easy, whereas with the first game you had to play it like at least two or three times and you had to, you know, play like, what, you had to play like 50, 40 hours of the multiplayer and as you'll know if you're a avid viewer of the channel, I do like a bit of Last of Us multiplayer. I do like a bit of Factions multiplayer, you know? Part 2 is multiplayer. That's happening, right? Like that's the thing that's happening. I've seen some leaks. Um, those were actually the only leaks I saw, because obviously the game got leaked before it came out, uh, unfortunately. That was the only thing I saw, <laughs> so, pretty fortunate, yeah? Anyway, to wrap up, I think, uh, Last of Us Part 1's good, you know that, we're not here for that. I also, though, replayed Uncharted 4, and even though I don't like Uncharted 4 more than The Last of Us Part 1, I enjoyed this playthrough of it more than my playthrough of The Last of Us Part 1, because uh, I haven't played it in a long time, and because... I mean, it's just general with Naughty Dog games. There are so many minor tweaks and changes that they make to the game that just benefit it overall. It just makes it a lot more enjoyable and just a lot more fun. But and you can definitely feel some of the Last of Us is is the Last of Us is the Last of Us is the Last of Us Part One's influence on Uncharted Four. You know, it's, the story's a bit more serious, I guess. It's a bit more dark. It's still it kind of balances it uh, well, I think. And I think the story itself is really good, actually. I really love the whole pirate mystery. I loved all that shit, even way back when, when I first played the game and I you know, made that video we won't speak of. I liked it then. I thought the whole pirate mystery was really great, and I still feel that way. And I love that... <laughs> I know we're talking about Uncharted 4 now, but I love that bloody... What's his name? Guybrush Threepwood, or whatever his name is, from Treasure Island. I love that he's just a character in the story, you know? Like... That's such a weird little fun thing that you wouldn't expect to find in a game like that, and I think that's just really neat, so top drawer. I will say though, 
Uh, Uncharted 4's combat is unbelievably dead. It's so boring, and I don't know, like, most people... I think I mentioned in my original video, I said I really enjoyed the climbing. I enjoyed exploring, because it was just relaxing, and I still feel that way. Not so much the climbing, it's, it's kind of boring. I do enjoy the animations, though. And I do enjoy how if you just stick the, if you just use the left stick, he'll just kind of reach his hand out. He'll just grab things and you'll just transition like that instead of just jumping, you know? So the little moments like that, the attention to detail goes a long way. But the climbing itself is pretty boring. And the parts of the game I enjoyed the most were, were when I wasn't holding the controller, you know? I was just watching the cinematics and I was, or when I was exploring, because just walking around the environments is really fantastic. Walking around uh, New Devon, you know, that whole area, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's really quite stunning, actually, and yeah, it's it's a lot of fun just being in that environment. It's it's that sort of uncharted charm, I guess. Uncharted charm. Ooh, look at that. But, is there anything else I want to say much more? Um, no, not really. Okay, so yeah, that's my Uncharted 4 thoughts. Just, you know, Let's now get into the main part. This this can be your like spoiler warning, I guess. Last was part two. I don't even know what I've already said about it. It's been like eight minutes. Uh, I guess for starters, just no spoilers. I will say that I enjoy the game more than part one. I do like part two more than part one. Uh, that's I don't know. I don't know if that's massively controversial to say, but I just think it's a better game. So there you go. And that's all I have to say about it. Yeah, there's a video. No, I mean, um, let's start with, I've got some notes here, just like a few sentences of stuff. Let's start with some minor stuff. So if, if you're still watching and you don't want to get spoiled, you can, you can stick around, you know, we can, we can allow you to be here right now. Um, I literally have written down here, I don't like holding triangle, I prefer the tap. So if you played the game, you'll know what I mean. You pr you're pressing triangle a lot to do like button prompts and open this and do that, and triangle just kind of an all-in-one button with Naughty Dog games. Uh, and for some reason in The Last of Us Part 2, there is an abundance of holding triangle. You know, in Uncharted 4, there's so much tapping. You, you're tapping that, and obviously in the menus, in the options, you can change it and you can set it to hold if you don't want to tap it. But I went to the options to check if it was all automatically on hold, and it was on tap. And I, I swear there's only a few instances in the game where you actually tap it. The majority of the time you're holding triangle, and it kind of grew on me, you know, the second playthrough, I kind of forgot about it, but I do enjoy a good tap, you know, a good thumb workout, just tapping that button. It's, it's fun, you know, I feel like I'm doing something instead of just open the gate, you know. <laughs> um, so I guess we'll talk a little about the gameplay now. Um, I feel like the gameplay has been improved significantly, actually. I've seen a lot of people say, oh, it's just the same game, and it's like, I mean, I guess, but I also don't think that's a bad thing, you know, The Last of Us, the first game, the gameplay was fine for what it was, but they could have done more, and I feel like they have done more, you know? You know, the the ability to dodge an incoming attack, or to jump, or to go prone, those are minor things, but for me, they do kind of add up to making the gameplay feel a lot more fresh and a lot more exciting than the first game. Um, and it's the same problem I had with, I guess, Uncharted 4, is like every combat scenario is the exact same. You kind of approach it in the same way, you know, you start with stealth, you inevitably get spotted, and then you go full guns blazing, and that's it, <laughs> you know, there's not much difference to it, it's just the same thing. But with Last of Us Part 2, there's a lot of different scenarios, you know, you can, in the, in the TV station, for example, I might even have a video clip of this, and I'll pop, pop it off if I do. Like, six people spawn in, and they come, and you just, you get an explosive arrow, you fire that thing, it kills them all in one shot, and it's crazy. You know, those explosive barrels, I barely used them on the first playthrough, and I regret doing so. They're very useful. Um, but yeah, I've seen some people say, like, the jump button uh, is useless, and I, I'm just curious as to what they thought it was going to do, you know? It's just a jump button. Like, what's it going to do? Why are you expecting something different than a jump? It's not It's not going it, to... that's all it's going to do. But even just in, like, Uncharted, you know, just walking around, jumping every, every now and then, like, that's just fun, you know? There's something that's fun about just jumping, just pressing buttons, I don't know. Those are small gameplay changes, and as far as gameplay is concerned, I don't really have a lot to say, but I do enjoy it. It is a lot of fun, uh, just playing the game, and just part of what's so great about The Last of Us is, like, the environmental stuff. You know, you find a note, 
and it tells its own story within that note and you find the different notes and collectibles and you can kind of piece it all together. That's part of what's so great about The Last of Us is just exploring around, seeing what you can find and that's something I really enjoy. Um, as for the enemies you face in the game, obviously that's more of a story thing I guess, but you've got the um, you've got the wolves and you've got the seraphites who <laughs> I've written down here. Uh, the seraphites, I don't know if it's just me, but their their outfits, they look like they look like brown parcels in human form, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Like you know, brown parcels. Yeah, I don't I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Um, but they're pretty freaky, you know. That first encounter with them, that well, oh, that got me. That jump scare that did when you're walking through the park, and they start whistling or whatever, and then you get shot with the arrow. Oh, scared the shit out of me. Um, a few weeks ago now, I, just in my room as I am, I actually heard someone outside my bedroom window, like just outside, I heard someone whistling, <laughs> and it was like, I've never heard that before, and my mind immediately went <laughs> to the, the Seraphites, and I was like, what's happening? <laughs> so that was pretty scary, the whole whistling thing to communicate, that, that's very effective, it's very strategic as well, but it's, it's very freaky, and it, that freaked me out for sure, so... Top drawer on that one, I guess. And yeah, I guess that's all the minor things I've talked about. So let's get into the major stuff. This is what you came for, all right? This is the big boy stuff that you came for. You want to hear what I have to say. Think, bleh. well, I can't even speak. So you want to hear what I have to say about it. So let's get into the spoilers. If you're still watching and you haven't played the game, go and bloody play it. It's a great game. Come on now. Don't listen to other people. Just, <clears throat> I don't know. So obviously. The big point of contention with the leaks, as mentioned earlier, I didn't get anything leaked, fortunately. If any of you did, that's that's a shame for you, I, I imagine. I couldn't imagine getting a game like this spoiled. That'd be really gutting, actually. Like, there's people I know online that got some stuff spoiled, and I just, uh Very... Yeah, it, it sucks. It sucks when a game gets spoiled. Seems like something that happens a lot these days. Luckily, I didn't get anything major, or really anything at all spoiled, but I would actually argue that... The period between when the game comes out and you close to being finished with it, that's more of a precarious zone when it comes to spoilers, because the leaks are just a few people just circling them around, right? But when the game's actually out and it's in people's hands, and especially when what happens happens so early into the game, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a bit more daunting then, because you could be like two hours away from the ending and get the ending spoiled, because the game's been out for days at that point, because the game did take me about four hours. Four hours. The game took me about four days to finish. So I guess that's something to consider as well, and that was something I was very uh, wary of as well. When The Lost Legacy came out, I got the ending spoiled, the whole train sequence. But I was having so much fun with the game when I was playing it that I didn't even remember it when I actually got to that part. I completely forgot about it somehow. And same sort of thing with this game. I got, like, part of the final confrontation spoiled, with Ellie, like, holding the knife to Abby's throat. But once I got to that point, I forgot about it, and I didn't even go, oh, that's what that scene is, because, like, yeah. But anyway, on to the big stuff. So obviously, two hours into the game or so, the main character from the last game is just executed. He's just butchered in the most vile and cruel way possible, and it was fantastic. I loved it. Love that. Love that for you, Abby. Let's go. Team Abby, come on. <laughs> nah, um... I w on first playthrough, it was pretty jarring, uh, and I think it's supposed to be, right? It's supposed to be kind of intentionally underwhelming, or not underwhelming, but anticlimactic in a way. Um, because he just kind of dies, you know? Uh, there's not much build up to it, it just sort of happens, and... I don't know, I think it's great. I think it's really great, because when you actually consider what he did in the first game, and how this game adds to it in a really fun way, uh, which I'll talk about in a sec, when you actually think about it, it makes complete sense, and when you remove that emotional feeling, you kind of realize, oh yeah, this guy had it coming, because he's a horrible person, and he's done horrible things, and he kind of deserves this in a way, you know? In a way. <laughs> um, but I love what the game does with Abby. I gotta, I gotta talk about Abby. Who would have thought, going into this game, that my favorite character would have been the person that killed Joel? Like, that's crazy. And I gotta give a lot of props to... You know, Laura Bailey portraying the character, she did fantastic. There's so many great scenes um, of her in the game. And I think just generally the writing, I think her character is just really strong. I think it's a really strong character. 
Um, so anyway, like I was saying, uh, this game adds to the first game in a really fun way. So obviously in the first game, you kill that doctor, and you have to do it. You're forced to do it. You can't get out of it. You have to do it to save Ellie. So they take that, they take you forcing Joel to kill the doctor, and they turn it into the reason why Joel dies in the next game. And it's, it's, it's such a great idea because it adds to the first game in a really fun way as well because, well, maybe not fun, <laughs> but unless you like that. But it adds to the first game in a great way as well because if you replay the first game now, you're going to feel even more like that moment where you stab the doctor with the scalpel or when you shoot him or whatever. That's going to have so much more weight than it had before because doing that, you're basically signing Joel's death certificate for him. It's such a great moment. It's such a great way of impacting that first game even more than it already was. Because in the first game, actually no, in the first game, yeah, it's not even that impactful at all. In the first game, it's not a matter of, am I going to kill this guy? It's a matter of when I kill this guy or how I'm going to kill this guy. But in the second game, if you go back to the first game after the second game, it really makes you think, I don't want to do this now because you know what's going to happen. You know that this is going to lead to Joel dying. So I think that as the catalyst for Joel dying and then everything that happens afterwards. I think that was genius, to be honest. That's just... Um, and I think it just adds a lot to Joel as a character as well, because, you know, he slips up that one time, you know, he he tells them his name, you know, because that's such a worry in this sort of universe where there's definitely posters up on the walls of the streets saying, have you seen this man, Joel Miller, wanted for mass genocide or something, you know, that's definitely a concern. Also, I want to talk about that scene real quick. Um, it's one of those moments where you kind of forget about it, but if you actually uh, replay the game, if you look, look back on it, Joel doesn't actually tell uh, Abby his name. It's Tommy who tells Abby his, uh, their name. He says, you know, I'm Tommy, this is my brother Joel. And you can actually notice in that scene, I didn't even clock it the first time, but you can actually see Abby turn to Joel and go, oh, it's this guy, you know? And then she sort of hatches the whole plan after that. And You'll notice in the scene where they ambush Joel and Tommy, you can definitely tell that there is some tension there. Like, there is a lot of tension in that scene. You can tell Joel is sort of sizing everyone up. You can tell he's sort of trying to get an idea of them, uh, besides Abby, because, you know, he just saved her, and they're kind of, you know, they're tight for the time being. I don't think it's out of character for Joel to say his name to someone. That's that's really stupid. And that's, an, that's another thing about this game, about people not liking it, about people, you know, reacting in the way they do. It's the same shit every time, you know, like people are making comparisons with The Last Jedi and, you know, Game of Thrones season 8, it's like, watch something else? Do you, wa do you watch anything else? Do you, is all you watch The Last Jedi and that one season of Game of Thrones you don't like? Like, watch something else. <laughs> watch something you actually like. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know, w with a game like this, when people are disappointed, they have to go through the same motions, you know, we gotta send the the creators of the game and the voice actors death threats we've got to start petitions we've got to review bomb the game or the movie it's just we got to make up like these i don't know these stupid complaints that i don't know it's it's just the same shit every time it's really funny getting back to abby killing joel i think i just think it's a great moment i think the way they set up her character you know you hate her at first you're you just want to kill her and then the game halfway through it it switches and at that point, you play as Abby for the rest of the game. And I remember when I was playing that for the first time, the only thing I was thinking was, okay, this is really interesting and cool, but when are we going back to Ellie? You know, for the entire, however long that part of the game is, I just kept thinking, okay, but when are we going to play as Ellie again? And then you get back to the theater and you're like, okay, cool, we're going to play as Ellie again. And then you don't. <laughs> and then you're playing as Abby trying to kill Ellie. And it's like, what the fuck's going on? It's crazy. Uh, it's so interesting because... You're, after having played a few hours of Abby's story, you're in her shoes now. And even though you don't want to kill Ellie, you don't really want, at least I didn't, want Abby to die either from Ellie's hands. So it's this really interesting, like, conflict of playing as this character, trying to kill this character, when you thought you were going to be this character again. And it's just, it's just, the game basically just... I don't even know how to describe it. The game just, you don't really want to do any of it, you know? And the game does that at that point, you know? The game makes you disagree with the character you're playing as and the things that the character wants or what the character is doing, you don't want yourself, but you're forced to do it. And I just think there's something really interesting about a game that does that and sort of challenges you to think about the different perspective, you know? And I think it speaks volumes to why so many people 
are still mad about Abby after the game when they didn't really see what was happening. Like, people keep making up like, oh, revenge is bad and that's the game. But it just makes you look a bit like a moron, to be honest, because if that's all you got out of the game, it says a lot more about you than the game itself when the game isn't about revenge is bad. The game is about, <clears throat> you know, knowing when enough is enough and holding on to what little humanity you have left because killing someone isn't going to bring back someone else, you know? It's about, as many people have said, you know, it's about forgiveness and it's about all that good stuff and I don't know, the game is never really about revenge. Revenge feels like a disguise or a distraction from the guilt that Ellie is harboring over never recon reconciling with Joel and, you know, the final scene where she does and they kind of had that moment, it's like, oh, we can try again, you know, even though Joel died, the hope was there that, you know, one day they would be able to go back to normal. I don't even know if any of what I just said makes sense, but there you go. So anyway, then you're, uh, as I was saying, you're at the theater, you're playing as Abby, killing Ellie. At this point, I'm just losing my mind. I don't know what the fuck's going on, and I'm just like, what's happening here? And, you, and there, were, there was a moment in that theater where I was like, oh my god, Abby's gonna kill Ellie, and we're gonna have to do it. We're gonna kill Ellie? What's happening? Uh, it was just, it was mayhem, to be honest. Um, uh, but I will, t I will say my first playthrough, it wasn't mixed by any means, but there was definitely low points and high points. I would say the first few hours and the last few hours, I really didn't know how to feel about. But I would say, like, the moment Ellie and Dina, I'll talk about Dina in a second as well. Um, the moment Ellie and Dina get to Seattle up until uh, when they're on the farm, I guess. Every minute of that part, from Ellie's uh, side of the story to Abby's side of the story, I fucking loved all of that. Like, genuinely, that middle chunk of the game was just the best shit ever. Like, it's just, it's just the best shit I've played in so long. It's so damn good, honestly. And yeah, like I said, Abby ended up being my favorite character, and I, I could have honestly just had the entire game just as Abby, and Joel and Ellie are just there, and we're just playing as Abby instead. That would have made people even more mad. And I guess part of what makes Abby's character so much better and more interesting is how it parallels with Ellie and Joel and their story. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, also, uh, the side characters I guess we could talk about. Uh, I really loved Dina, I really loved Owen as well. I thought those two main romantic figures were really great. I thought that was just all really compelling stuff, you know, that human uh, drama, you know, just adds a lot to the game. Uh, the hints of the hints of Dina's pregnancy uh, throughout the first playthrough, completely over my head. I I didn't have a clue what that bitch was on about, what she was going through. But yeah, she's she's pregnant. Uh, and the second time around, you notice it a lot more. You notice it like immediately. It's like oh, this and this and oh, of course she throws up when she sees the horse. And it's just a little thing that I don't know if they intend for it to go completely <clears throat> over your head um, when you're playing the game the first time. But when you play it the second time. You just pick up on it straight away. And the first time around, I'm just like, what's over there? Like, I'm not even paying attention to her. It's, it's weird. I don't know how they do it. Um, and the final scene between Ellie and Dina was fantastic as well. I love that scene so much where she tells him, tells him? <laughs> where she tells her, you know, uh, you know, Jesse didn't mean for, for himself to die. Neither did Joel. And, you know, she sort of realizes, oh, <laughs> shouldn't have said that. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a really great scene. And, Obviously, there is still a lot of love between them there, but I don't know. It's like a drug addict or something. You know, you can't keep enabling that person. You, you, if if they're not willing to change, you can't be there from for them anymore, even if you want to, because that's just their battle to fight, I guess. So yeah, a lot of the side characters were were good. I I don't know. I I just feel like I feel like every character has their place. You know, every character has a reason to be there, and you know, I, I loved the whole. Uh, Abby and Lev dynamic as well. I loved that. I thought that was really great. I thought Lev was a great character and his whole struggle and what he was going through I felt like that was handled pretty well and the way they you know introduced it and the way they kind of just You know, it's just brought up I guess I thought that was all really well done Yeah, I don't know. There's just a lot of standout moments You know if I was gonna go into every single one of them, we'd be here for hours. There's one more thing Actually, I want to talk about one more thing Just kind of before we I want to talk about a few more things actually before we wrap up um I've seen, as always, I've seen some people say that this game should have just been a movie, you know? Like, first game, 
and the second game people say oh it should just be a movie because it's trying to be a movie anyway and we all know it's a brain dead argument you know we all know it's it's a moronic thing to say but let's entertain the idea for a second and in order to do that i'm going to use the hospital section as an example so obviously in the game as ellie you go to a hospital and you find nora and you 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 butcher her like abby did joel and ooh, <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> ooh, okay uh, <laughs> in some sort of red room um but that hospital section of the game is really great because you get there as Ellie, and when you're there as Ellie, Abby is in the basement at the same time, right? Like, think about it for a second. Abby shows up at the hospital, she's detained by the wolves, and she's handcuffed in the elevator. Nora gets her out, and then Abby goes underground. Underground? She goes down to the basement. Um, I'm trying to piece it together now. Like I said, it's been a few weeks since I played the game, so hopefully I'm right here. Uh, and then Nora lets her out, obviously, and then Nora gets those two guys to help her with the boxes to distract them. And then when you show up as Ellie in the vent coming over, those two same guys are questioning Nora about what happened with Abby. You know, where is she? And it's one of those things you just don't even really pick up on on the first playthrough, but when you play it again and you realize, oh, they're in the same place at the same time. And there's something really interesting about how Ellie's entire story is based around Abby, and Abby's just off doing her own thing. And I kind of love that. I love that the stories aren't actually intertwined at all. You know, sometimes they're really close to each other, and sometimes they're really far away, and th Abby's just off doing her own thing. And I really like that. I don't know why. I just, I there's something about the game almost having two different stories that I think really works, you know? Anyway, so Ellie gets to the hospital. She chases after Nora, and later in the game, we walk through that same part as Abby, which is really nice. And yeah, there's... Um, obviously they fall down into the, the red room where the spores are and the clickers, and one of the officers, one of the wolf guys, he says, why the fuck's the power on? And then you realize, oh right, the power's on, because Abby turned, because when we were playing as Abby, we turned the power on. And there's just all these really neat moments where you just put the pieces together, and you just realize, oh, this is all happening at like the exact same time. And... To get to my point of why this wouldn't work as a movie, unless I didn't mention that before, this is my point. If it were a movie, I can almost guarantee you that how they would frame it and how they would present it to you is that you'd, you'd show up to the hospital as Ellie, but the movie would keep cutting back and forth between Abby and Ellie. So we get a bit of Abby underground, we get a bit of Ellie, and back and forth, back and forth. And that would work, like, that's fine. But in this game, there's none of that, you know, there's no hints at, besides the little things like the power and stuff like that, the conversation they have, uh, Nora and the officers, there's no concrete, hey, this is happening at the same time, how cool is this? The game doesn't tell you any of that, it's all for you to just figure out yourself. And when I did, I was like, whoa, they're literally in the same building right now, and I think that's so cool. Um, but anyway, so the reason that wouldn't work as a movie is because it would keep cutting between the scenes, you know, it would keep showing Ellie and it would keep showing Abby and it would sort of be hinting at them crashing and then, you know, falling into each other at some point. But then it just doesn't happen, you know, Ellie goes off, Abby goes off, and that's your lot. It's, it's, it seems like such a minor thing, but I love the way it's done, you know, I love how the game just doesn't really tell you that that's happening. The game just kind of lets you figure that out for yourself and I don't know if I, I don't I don't know if I've explained any of that well, but I really love that. I really love how you're in the same place at the same time. I just there's just something about that that I haven't seen in any other game, you know. And that's part of why playing The Last of Us Part Two just felt so unique. It felt so fresh because you're going through the same environments, but it's in a different context and it has different meaning and it's significant or less significant because of that meaning. I don't know. It's just good shit. Uh, that's all. That's all I'm gonna say about. It. And I guess last but not least, we should probably talk about uh, Abby and how some people think there should have been a choice. Ooh, there should have been a choice to kill Abby. Obviously, I disagree. Of course. Uh, the reason this wouldn't work uh, is obvious. Um, it's because it would just contradict what they were going for, right? Um, even though, to be fair, from what we know, like halfway into the, halfway through the development of the game, the uh, the idea was actually to have Ellie kill Abby, 
And I guess that would have been a lot more dark than what we got. But staying true to the characters, you know, Ellie decides just, hey, maybe it isn't worth it. Maybe I don't want to kill Abby. Um, or maybe she just can't bring herself to do it. I'm not sure of the actual reason behind it, I guess. It's kind of open to your interpretation, I guess. What, what you think, you know, why she doesn't kill Abby. Another thing as well is how that final section of the game, the last few hours in Santa Barbara, I really love the location. You know, I love the beaches and I love the, the mansions, you know, the just on the, the coast. I thought that was a really cool environment to fight in. Uh, that part of the game does kind of drag on and it does leave you sort of thinking, okay, let's, come on, let's wrap this up now. But maybe that's the point, you know, like at this point, do you even care about revenge? Do you even want to kill Abby at this point? It's been so long. Like, just get over Ellie. Come on, just get over it. You're being a baby. Come on now. <laughs> I don't know. I want to talk about Ashley. Just imagine the scenario if Ellie kills Abby, all right? Now, if Ellie kills Abby, what actually changes in the ending of the game? You know, you may say this is, oh, well, this is proof why it was, it should have been a choice because the actual ending doesn't change. It's just sort of the context behind it. But I would argue that that makes it a worse choice to have the choice to kill Abby because if there isn't any significant change in the ending, then what's the point? It's just there to give the player a choice when that was never the point. You know, why isn't there then a choice to save Owen or not kill uh, Owen or Manny or Mel or anyone? You know, why is it just Abby? And why is it just right at the end of the game? That would feel really weird. It, it wouldn't make any sense, I don't think. And I think this is the point, regardless of what happens at the end of the game, whether a Ellie kills Abby or, wh or whether or not she does, uh, she doesn't kill Abby. <laughs> I can't even speak. Um, the game still ends the same way. You know, Ellie's alone. She's lost everything and everyone. Joel's dead. He's not going to come back. So the only thing that actually changes is just whether or not there is still like a piece of humanity inside of her and there is still something there that could be, you know, I don't know, like she could redeem herself maybe, I guess. Um, so the actual scenario, like nothing really changes, you know, if, if they had Ellie kill Abby, nothing would really change, you know, it's not like Ellie's going to feel fulfilled and she's going to go back with Dina and it's all going to be great. Like nothing's actually going to change by her killing Abby. So I don't really understand the need for the choice other than players wanting to feel involved in the story in some way and if it's through the most transparent and unnecessary choice, oh, just press a button and this happens instead. I mean, I could do without it is what I'm saying. Also, big props to the guitar. That guitar, oh my, that was the best part of the game. Like, f fuck everything else. Being able to play a real life guitar in a video game, that, who does that? Who does that? It's so stupid and it's so unnecessary, but I love it so much and obviously, Obviously, if you know me, you know I've been playing guitar for the last year, so being able to actually play songs I know in a video game, that's crazy. That that was such a cool moment. I literally spent like maybe half an hour on that first section where you just get the guitar and I was just like, all right, we're just going to fuck around with this for a bit. And I did. Oh, it was, it was such fun. It was such great fun. And yeah, uh, as well as that, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things I could talk about, right? There's a lot of flashbacks in the game. There's a lot of... <laughs> you know, kind of going here and there, and there's been some argument about, um, you know, like maybe we should have had the flashbacks be chronological, and I mean, that's just how it is, you know, whenever people give their opinion, love or hate, there's always, here's how I would have done it, it's like, did I ask? No. <laughs> um, I mean, I get why people want to give their input, but I don't know, like I've seen even like Jack Septica, he said that the game should have begun with the dinosaur museum flashback, and I'm just like, why? <laughs> you know, like, it would have been a nice moment, but the only purpose it serves as the beginning of that, of the game, is to show you the, how their relationship has changed, or how they're more comfortable than they've ever been. But by having it later in the game, after Joel has died, when Ellie is reminiscing while playing the guitar, I think that makes a lot more sense, and it has a lot more meaning, and it has a lot more emotion behind it, because there's actually a reason for why Ellie would be reminiscing about this, you know? Because he's dead, you know? If the game begins and that's what she's thinking about, what's the reason for that? Oh, just a nice thought. I don't know. But yeah, a lot of people said, you know, maybe we should have just played as Abby in the beginning. Maybe we should have, which, to be honest, I wouldn't have minded, actually. I thought that I, that might have been kind of cool to start the game as some random woman. And then we get to that part with Joel and we kill her. But 
I don't know, it, it kind of works in the opposite way of it'd be cool, but people would be even more mad. But I guess, you know, they're going to be mad one way or the other. So why not? Sure. I don't know. I think that's all I have to say about the game. I can't really think of anything else. I've probably left something out. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't really said anything more or anything more to say. I just, I just think this is a really fantastic game. I think the story is super ambitious and creative and, you know, just... I think it's just really interesting what they've done here, how they've crafted, like, two individual narratives that don't really converge at any point besides obviously the theater i j i don't know it's, it it shouldn't make sense and it shouldn't work you know like these two separate narratives doing their own thing and they're not really integrated in any way it shouldn't work but it did for me i, I don't know why i just i think it's just i don't know I, th I think it's just the mirroring and the parallels between abby and joel and abby and ellie and just all those sort of little things and how obviously in this universe no one is black and white well there are people who are black and white that's not what i mean i mean no i mean no one is fully good fully evil you know joel isn't a hero a hero uh abby isn't a villain you know ellie isn't a villain by the end of the game i've seen so many people say oh they make ellie a villain at the end and it's like how have you ever enjoyed the last of us if you look at the characters as hero villain good bad like that's not the point and it's never been the point, and I don't know how you could enjoy the first game if that's what you got out of it. You know, if, if you beat the first Last of Us game, and you see Joel massacring all those people, and you you say, that's a hero right there, that's a real man, you may want to seek some help, to be honest, because I don't think that's normal. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think there's just a lot of interesting stuff this game does, and yeah, I don't know, I have a lot of love and respect for what they did with this game, you know? I love a game that challenges you to take what you did in the first game and change the perspective and I don't know I, I, I don't know I don't know how else to really explain it or articulate it I just think what they did with this game was super interesting and I love what they did with it you know I I was one of those people who was very oh I don't want a last of us part two unless it's with Joel and Ellie but to be honest after playing this game like I I wouldn't have minded you know I think I mentioned that earlier I wouldn't have minded if it was just Abby if it was just her story and then at some point we just kill the, the character from the last game that'd be that'd be really funny actually in, in a way but yeah i don't know it's 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 akin to akin it's similar to games like you know spec ops the line there's some great stuff in that game that kind of challenges your perception of what's actually happening um and you know there's this one moment spoilers for that game i guess if you haven't played it go and play it. it's fantastic and it's a lot shorter than this game so you can probably get through it twice before you finish last of the part two there's this great moment where you're fighting a big brute enemy and he's got like a big gun and he, he storms through the door i haven't played the game in a while so i might be a bit foggy on this um but he storms through the door and it's one of your men from earlier who died and you have to shoot him you're forced to shoot this guy otherwise he kills you and it's your it's your like partner from earlier and then you die i think you're forced to die i don't think you can actually beat the that section and then you respawn and the guy who comes back through the door isn't the guy that died earlier it's just a generic enemy and it's just it's weird things like that that kind of you know it, it challenges what you think is actually happening i guess and it forces you to think about it in a different way and it's kind of weird and i don't know i just i love shit like that you know obviously a lot of people have been comparing this to the last jedi and the last jedi is more about like recontextualizing what you like about star wars i guess you know the last jedi to me kind of made me realize what i did and didn't like about star wars and how stupid and silly it is but how it doesn't do it that in a mocking or in an offensive way it's more in a this is really stupid and dumb as hell but we love it because of that and you know i i like when narratives do that when they kind of poke fun at things and they poke fun at themselves like the last jedi um and yeah it's almost like I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go into the last chat. What, what is this? But yeah, I've been rambling now for about 50 minutes. I was told to keep this video under 30 minutes, so <laughs> I'll try and edit it down as much as I can. But yeah, those are my many thoughts on The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, oh god, I'm exhausted now. <laughs> my fucking voice. <laughs> uh, let me get some water, actually. So yeah, like I said, those are my thoughts on The Last of Us Part 2. My many, many thoughts. Uh, so yeah uh i don't know what else to say i guess another thing just really quickly is how obviously i'm in a server online on discord who isn't in a discord server come on we all have our own at some point don't we um 
and all of us in the server like The Last of Us Part 2. But it's interesting to see how, I think me and this one other guy, I think me and Soul, if you're watching this, I think we like the game the most out of everyone, to be honest. Um, maybe, I don't know, you can, they'll, they'll tell me I'm wrong if I am. Um, so it's interesting to see kind of, we all like the game, but there are many things we disagree on and differ on, and there are some people in the server, won't name any names, but there are some people who don't like Abby, and they don't like that story, and they think it drags on, and her flashbacks, and all that stuff. So it's really interesting to see how we all like the game, but for different reasons, and I don't know. I just think this is one of those games where there's a lot to get out. Of, there's a lot to get out of it, regardless of your stance on it. You know, whether you like it, whether you hate it. There's a lot of reasons for both of those sides, and I don't know. I think this is a really special game, and <laughs> weirdly enough, actually, if I if I had to sum it up in a word, I'd say it's impressive. You know, it's impressive how Naughty Dog. Gameplay-wise, narrative-wise, just in every sense of gaming, they managed to just keep setting the bar higher, you know, like, what's the sport? Bloody, you know, there's like a bar and you gotta jump over it. The bar's like all the way up here, and they just keep jumping over it somehow, and I, it's impressive. And yeah, there's just something special about Naughty Dog games, and, you know, we can argue about the ethics of how they how they get to that point and how they actually make their games, <laughs> but you know maybe that's a topic for another person. I'm not I'm not well versed to talk about that. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Last of Us Part Two. <laughs> I did kind of ramble on, so sorry about that. But if you enjoyed, hey, thanks for enjoying. And let me know what you thought of the game. You know whether you liked it, disliked it. Let me know, because I'm sure you'll have something to say about it. And uh, just, as always, this is just my opinion. I probably said something offensive in this video because I always manage to do that. So just know, I'm not trying to offend anyone, I'm not trying to insult anyone. If you dislike the game, that's cool, I get it. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. I've got some other videos coming soon. I've got some videos, I think there'll be a video out by the time this video comes out. Uh, on the, actually I'm just gonna say it, on the Xbox Game Pass, you know? Heard of that? Ugh. And there's some other videos I've got, some really fun ideas, I hope. So hopefully it doesn't turn to shit. Hopefully I can actually make something of it and yeah. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Stan Abbey. Bye. That's a big drop. Well, that looks look really bad down there. Mm-hmm.